Hey guys, it's me Pat and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to discuss about basic logic in discrete mathematics. So here's our outline for today. We have three topics. The first one will be propositions, definition of terms, and operators. So for proposition, the definition of it is declarative sentence that is either true or false. When we say declarative sentence, it ends with a period and it's not interrogative nor imperative sentence. Because when we say it's interrogative, it means there are questions, like question marks. And when we say imperative sentence, it is a command. So for example, for interrogative, we have what is your name, what is your age, and for imperative, you have get me some coffee. When you command a person to do something, that is imperative. Now, when we say proposition, we have three um, definitions that we need to understand. The first one would be propositional variables. The second one would be compound propositions. And the third one would be the truth values. So first is the propositional variables. We ha the meaning of that would be letters. Letters that denote that denotes a proposition. When we say letters, it can be P, Q, R, or etc. It can be A, B, C, or it depends on you. Now, when we say compound propositions, these are combination of one or more propositions using operators. So operators, we're going to discuss that later. So let's now move on to the truth values. When we say truth values, these are true or false, meaning we have two values, one is true and the other one is false and it can be represented by one or zero. Now moving on, we go to the operators. When we say operators, these are, um, these are logical connectives that create your compound propositions. It can be unary or binary. When we say unary, it is, it is only one and when we say binary, meaning by, it, we, um, it means two. So we have six operators, first is negation or not, conjunction and end, disjunction and or, conditional or implies, biconditional, and then ex exclusive or. So first, we are going to discuss about negation. Let me change this one into a pen. Okay, as you can see here, we have a variable. Our variable, our propositional variable is letter P, and this variable is only one. So we will have the formula of this one, 2 raised to n. When we say 2 raised to n, n means the number of variables, which is 1. So 2 raised to 1, okay, that would be 2, meaning we have two truth values. When we divide that, so like that, 1 plus 1, we have... 1 t which means true and the other one would be f which means false so when we say negation or not you are negating negating this original form so when we negate we can also write this simple like this okay like that one so when we negate true we will have false and when we negate false we will have true so that's it for the negation. It's just simple. Next one, we will proceed to the conjunction part. When we say conjunction, okay, it means end. And here's the symbol for end, like this one. Okay, now we have two variables, propositional variables, meaning we will have this formula, substitute it by two and will be substituted by 2 and we will have 4 meaning we have two truth values like that 2 true yeah. and then 2 two false okay and then when you divide it again it becomes like this true false true false so as you can see, we have here 2 true, then when you divide it again, it becomes 1. Do you get that? You just divide it and divide it until you complete the table. 
So, for example, we have 2, true. Then 1, true. What if we have 3 variables? We, then we have 2 raised to 3 would be 8. So, the first one would be 4. Because 4 plus 4 is equal to 8. Then we have um, 2. And then we go in, going to 1. So, first we have 4 truths. Then we have 2 truths. Then we have 1 false. And that would be um, alternate. So, when we say end, we are going to get the lower, the lower one. So, which is the lower one between true? So, the lower one between true would be true as well. Because there's no, because there's no different in that um, both true values. So, the next one would be true and false. That would become false. Why? Because that's the lowest value in this boat. You get that. So here, again, the lowest value would be false. So that's the answer for this. Well, this one, there's no difference. So it will remain the same. So as you can see in this conjunction or end, we only have one true answer. And that would be this one. Okay, I hope that's clear to you. And let's now move on to this junction. So for this junction, it is also known as the OR. And likewise, we're going to copy this table because it's, um, it's the same. It has two variables. So it has two true, then two false again. Then we're going to divide it by itself. Yeah. I mean, we're going to divide it. So we have an alternate of true false true false like that so when we say this junction or or we're going to have the maximum of both here we did the minimum part right that's why we got here the false false value while here we're going to go for the maximum since both of true are maximums we have true here, both and and for this one we have true and false. What's the maximum value? Of course, it's true. That's why it's true here. While for here false and true, what's the maximum value? That would be true again. While here there's no maximum value, so it will retain. That's why it's going to be false. Like that. So, I hope that's clear to you. Now, we're moving on with the conditional or implies. Okay. So, for this, we have this symbol. Like an arrow. Like that. So, for this one, again, we have two propositional variables. Now, to know this, we are going to determine the pattern. When it's both true, that would be true. When it's both, uh, when it's both false, that would be true as well. When it's false true, that would be true. And the only thing that when it is false, that would be true false. Like this, it would be false. Only when true false occurs, then the value would be false. So that's a reminder. That's the pattern. The, the only thing that would make this a false value is when you have true and false. Okay? I hope that's clear to you. Now we go on to the biconditional. This biconditional is very easy because it speaks of equivalency. I mean, equivalent. Like that. So we're going to copy this again. For this biconditional, as you can see, the only true value for this would be the same. If they are equivalent, when you see this, speaks of like this. This symbol. Two arrows. That means it is equal to this one. Equivalent. When they are the same. When they are the same, like true, true, you have a true value. While, the, while when it comes to false false they are the same again you have another true value 
while if they are not the same then you're going to have both false value okay i hope that's clear to you when it when it is equal that would be equivalent to true when it's not then it will be false now we will proceed to the last one and that would be exclusive or so mind you that this exclusive or is not yet complete it's like this that one that that is the symbol of the exclusive or so when we say exclusive or um there should only exist one there should only exist one value meaning they should not be the same sorry for my handwriting again okay as you can see again i repeat that exclusive or meaning there only exists one so meaning there here if we have p and with exclusive or to q there's both true so that would be false so it's the same as here that would be false because bo both false exist okay but when it comes to this only one true exists and only one false exists that would be true while for this one that would be true as well because there's only one false and one true that exists meaning you should be a unique one when when you um when you have to have when you want to have a truth value so i hope that's clear with you all this all the six um operators that we have and leave some questions in the comment section if you want to clarify something so now we're moving to our last slide and that would be the precedence of operators these are the precedent the precedence list of operators the first one would be negation but not really it is the parentheses one so this is from highest to lowest okay highest to lowest precedence so when we say precedence that means we should prioritize it we should go for the first thing or the last thing okay so the first one would be parenthesis then negation conjunction disjunction exclusive or conditional and by conditional and these operators are a while ago discussed so again this negation would be like this and symbolizes like this or exclusive or would be this one implies would be this one and a biconditional would be this one so that's it for today guys i hope that you understand my lesson and please check out my channel for more videos and more tutorials about logic so thank you for watching and please subscribe and like this video bye